we're high in the mountains of Southern Colorado in Pagosa Springs. And we're just about ready to go meet Wayne and Kathy Justice, who learned the hard way just how devastating fluoride can be to their, their animals. They show horses and quarter horses. They've lost six and four dogs. They now know why. I distill all of our drinking water, our dogs' water now. We've, we had, we've had four dogs die. This is what we got out of the distiller while the water was fluoridated. 90% of the arsenic in drinking water additives comes from the hydrofluosilicic acid fluoridation chemical. But you see how much clearer it got, and it wasn't thick. Hi, I'm Kathy Justice. My husband is Wayne Justice, Western artist. We raise registered quarter horses. We breed, show, and play with our horses. We love our horses. And uh, everything was going great until 1985 when artificial fluoridation started. We had no idea that was what was making our horses sick. So we changed feeds. We did everything. Had vets come out. We went, went to the ends of the earth trying to figure out what was wrong with our horses. And it wasn't until 2002 that my most precious baby doe died. <laughs> it's hard to talk about it. Six different vets, two of which were at uh, Colorado State University, that had absolutely no clue what was wrong with them. Winter of 2003-2004, uh, we had snow on the ground all winter long. That's the first winter in many winters, because Colorado's been having a drought, that we had snow on the ground all winter long. We have a 100-gallon tank outside. And we do allow our horses to be horses, so we keep them in the barn at night, but during the day, which is the biggest part of their day, they are out and they're able to play and do what they like to do. Well, we noticed that that tank that we normally filled every day to day and a half was only needing filled every 18 to 19 days. So we started watching the horses, and they would even stand right there by the tank uh, with the heated city fluoridated water looked clean and eat snow and they were eating snow a big part of the day and um we noticed that they all the colic stopped the amount of colics that we were having we didn't have one colic all winter long and almost all of the symptoms we had uh baby doe who had all this heavy cushing's hair she shed all winter long well when it gets down to 35 degrees below zero a horse shouldn't be shedding but she was shedding this excess hair. Um, anyway, after all the snow melted, we have a little ravine that runs through our place, and there was still snow up on the hill under the trees. And uh, this little, you can't even call it a stream, is about six inches wide and maybe an inch deep of water, muddy water was coming down the hill. And the horses would go over there and dig a little pool of this dirty, thick, muddy water and would rather drink that water rather than drink the so-called clean city water. My horse that I call Skipper, uh, right from the get-go when he was born, and he's second generation, uh, started out with an attitude. And uh, he'd try to bite me any time I went by. And he even kicked me one time. And, and to the point where at one point, time I even thought of getting rid of him and getting another horse. Uh, this was all while he was on fluoridated water. We noticed it didn't take too long after fluoridation had quit in our water that his attitude changed and he, uh, he now is a, a lover. I, he's a completely different horse. So I wouldn't sell him or part with him for a million dollars. No, he's a great horse. It had to have been the fluoridation. Dental fluorosis and then the attitude problems that Wayne was talking about, chronic coughing and wheezing, allergic reaction with skin bumps, kidney problems, constant excessive urination, and cancer. Horses, on average, a standing horse, one that is not doing anything, will drink between 10 to 12 gallons a day. 
a lactating mare can actually double that amount. Uh, ironic thing is the horses that we had get the sickest, the quickest, were the mares that were lactating, the mares that we, we had for brood mares. So my husband dug the mare back up, took a leg just below the knee, and sent it to Dr. Crook. To summarize what we found in the justice horses, one, there is a source of fluoride, namely the artificial fluoridation of the community water, which is the only source of water for the horses and the only source of fluoride because there is no fluoridated mineral supplements used and there is no fluoride uh, containing fertilizer used on the farm. Two, dental fluorosis. Three, we have the clinical manifestations as documented by Kathy Justice there in numerous pictures, hoof deformities, thickened bones. Then we have chemical analysis of the bone ash from a number of horses. We have radiographic evidences. Now we are up to three, four, five. We have also microscopic evidences of fluoride damage to the bone tissue, also reported allergy reaction to the artificial fluoridation of the community water. So all with the evidences we have accumulated, there can be no doubt at all, and stated with reasonable scientific certainty, that the justice horses were and are suffering from chronic fluoride poisoning. It wasn't until we got the scientific paper from Dr. Crook, the first one from Baby Doe, that I sent the water department a, a letter and uh, told them, this is what you've done to my horses. And they were totally appalled. Uh, second meeting, they were going to educate us how good fluoride was for us. And, of course, the things that they said were basically lies. The fluoridation of the Pagosa area water supply ceased. The citizens stood up and demanded that the water district act responsibly, and thankfully, they did. On a sadder note, Skipper, Wayne's million-dollar lovable horse, died January 31st of lung cancer. He was only nine years old. But that's a predictable result of drinking hydrofluorosilicic acid, arsenic-contaminated water. What's in your water?